sounded had no sound. This one better have sound. Okay, so uh, man, the options flow just continues to just flow a sea of red. It's unbelievable. And um, <clears throat> you know, this is when you see retail flow this negative. Sometimes it could be hedging because lots of uh, dealers, money managers, hedge funds, etc., use the SPY as a hedge. But if we scroll down here, let's see, I think I might have lost my place. Okay, good. Um, if you scroll down, you can see the dealer hedging and their hedging bearish. Again, this is opposite. If this is green, the dealers are uh, hedging bearish positions. And you can see in the past when this went green, price came down, green, down, green, down. This time, very green, but it hasn't dropped. How long can it hold up there? I really don't know. Um, you know, another concern is you can see the way the price distribution is. It's going more and more. Uh, bearish and of course we have the gex which is the dealer hedging sorry guys uh and you can see this 410 411 412 all have a negative gex that's pretty bearish as well so i'm a little concerned here just all i see is red everywhere i look yet we did have a green day so that was kind of interesting uh if you look at the um all of the options flow as it comes across this is spy and you can see these with the highest heat score are almost all puts. There's two calls in this batch that I can see. And so again, it's just, the market's gonna have a hard time sustaining any kind of rally uh, with what's going on. We did see a whole bunch of dark pools come through all throughout the day at 4.10.34. So that was pretty interesting um, because price touched 4.10.34 this morning um, right at the open. And so that was a good example of what happens when you get around these uh, dark pool areas. Uh, I'm going to scroll there. Sorry, guys. Yeah, almost. Okay. So this is that 410 uh, 30 was exactly where all those hedges came from. And you can see by the fact that the price sprung so much from here that these were probably uh bullish dark pulls so that's a good thing um i i just i just don't i don't like the picture uh if you look at the s p we're right at that 4150 level and that's just been really a crisis every time we've touched it i don't know why my laptop keeps flashing on and off you can see it last time, that was a major pivot off of that level. It happened one more time back here. It just keeps happening. So if we get above it, I think we can see one heck of a run in the market that could go on for a number of days. Um, if you look at my uh, time cycle data, it's getting pretty bearish. Uh, the magenta line going down means the midterm market is bearish, at least for the Dow. Uh, the white line, which is a long-term trend, is kind of flat, so that might just equal chop. <clears throat> On the NASDAQ, which just keeps going up, it's been amazing. Uh, you can see the white line and the magenta line are up in the upper reversal zone. And in fact, the magenta line may be starting to turn down. We wanna watch that. If this starts pointing down tomorrow, like this did today, I think we're gonna see some problems. Now, these are the price cycles all put together. I don't have time to really go into too much detail here, but I'll just tell you that this is something that you've probably never seen before. Um, it's a fascinating model using only time cycles. And this red line here is predictive. And look at how well the price follows the red line. And look where the red line's going. <clears throat> so we could see a pretty good sell-off going into uh, early June. And then we should see a kick back up. So that's it. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. One more big thing. The big money guys decided to start selling again. So they did a tiny bit of buying here and they started selling. But what really got me was this one. 
So this was 87 cells to 29 buys. Uh, that's not a good trend here. And I've never seen the market go up while this goes down. So we have a lot of things pointing at us that are going to look bearish. But we don't have to worry about it because we have been uh, just mostly scalping. Um, the weekend trades I call our swing trades. And those are just a little bit different. They're much safer to do in this market. Again, I don't really have time to get into it right now. <clears throat> okay, so how'd we do today? Um, not too bad. Um, Lee went uh, six and zero, oh, and I went five and one. Uh, the problem is my one loss got way too big. I'm gonna show you that when I get there, I'm gonna make an excuse. The sun was in my eyes. Uh, actually just feeling bad, big fog in my head. This is the best I've felt today. Um, and just my reflexes are not great. So uh, let's look at the trades. As you know, we log every single trade, every single day. <clears throat> not one trade gets missed um, from this ledger. And it's very real data. I don't know why it's not filling up. Oh, man. Okay, there it is. So that's an example of every trade. And if I scroll down here, you'll see my trades. I think. Yep. So uh, these are my trades. A couple of a couple of these here. These are also up top. That was my big loss I talked about. Really did cut into my my five wins. Okay, so let's just quickly review some of these trades uh, so you can see what's going on. I may not go through every one of them. Uh, so the first one, this was Lee's. He took this morning. We got the bear signal. Next thing after the bear signal, if there's no dots right there, then as you know, we have to clear these nearest wicks. Just look left and clear those wicks. And you can see that happened on this candle and the chop index dropped and it doesn't get any better than that. That was a great trade. Uh, this too was Lee's trade. Um, we got the bull signal here. So, in this particular case, again, no dots. So we have to clear these wicks back here. They're the nearest. And you can see this one cleared. He was in and out in one candle. A fairly small gain, uh, but a gain nonetheless. These little, these little wins, it's our style. They really, really add up. Um, you know, four or five, eight, nine dollar a contract wins and you end up making good money during the day. All right, this I think was mine. Um, and again, it's classic, perfect. You see the bull signal? There's no dot, so we had to clear uh, these wicks that are right here. These guys right here. And when we clear them, we like to make sure that this index has gone down. It did. I could have gotten in earlier. Um, I waited for confirmation, got in on this candle, got out on the next candle, a good trade, made money. Um, and then we did it again. So I wanted to quickly explain to you um, how this works. Yes, we even got a new bull signal. How do you know you're not chasing it when it's run this high? Well, it's kind of easy. We look for it, a place where it sort of like peters out and loses its steam. And once that that's happened, we wait and see if the price can break above where it tired out. So you can see these wicks are, were a hard stop. It pulled back, took its breath and charged the wall again, broke through, we entered on the breakthrough. And again, that was a very good trade. Could have stayed in it a lot longer as well. And by the way, that same thing happened right after that trade when we cleared these wicks. Again, great little jump. When we cleared this wick after this bull signal, great little jump. So. The system really does give you lots of opportunities to, to kind of get in and out. Uh, here was a short trade. Um, again, the signal fired way up here. Um, the dots actually were here. You see the dots? And so we could legitimately go in on this candle right here, kind of even this candle, because the chop index did drop. This did clear the dots here. I'm not sure why I went in late, what was going on. Um, but in and out, same candle, nice game. That's what we do. This was my loss. And so I want you to see how stupid I was. So the entry was actually pretty good. We had the bear signal, had to clear the wicks, cleared the wicks, chop dropped. It was a perfect entry. 
And in fact, it was instantly profitable. This trade was profitable several times. It kept touching down here and being you know, profitable. And I don't know how many times I said, and the group can back me up on this, I should close this, I should take this game, uh, or we should close this. And then we got an exit signal on flight station, which I just completely ignored or missed, I don't know. Um, and I got out up here. So I should have gotten out down here with a profit. Instead, I held it here and took a pretty big loss. That's not my style. Uh, and like I said to the group many times, I, I don't know why I'm in this. I should be out of this. I should be out of this. Um, so again, I'm just going to kind of blame a foggy head and lots of gold meds. Um, anyway, we got another chance again. Uh, Lee and I both took this trade. Um, again, we had the bull signal. It needed to break the dots. It did. Uh, so we got in kind of this latest entry and wrote it up here. Uh, another great win here. Um, uh, this, in this particular case, the chop index did not drop, but the bear signal fired. As you know, it just had to clear these wicks here. And <clears throat> the, this, the way the price action worked, it ran down really hard and then it ran right back up again. And so I told the group, if it can back up just a little more, I'm going to go back in. I'm going to go in because I believe it's going to at least run back down to the bottom of this wick. And it did. Um, so we were in and out of this pretty quick, made some money. And that's it. So five wins, one loss uh, for me, six wins, no losses for Lee. Um, and I think that's it. So please reach out if I can help you guys. If you want to ever watch us trade, send us a note. You can send me an email, dan at universityofoption.com. Just say, hey, I'd, like, I'd love a free pass to come watch you trade. Or you can join our Facebook group, which is called Trade Like a Wall Street Pro. And uh, we share some tips there. Okay, that's it. Thanks. Bye.